What's up guys, Constec here, back again for another video. Today we're putting the GigaWare K28's mechanical keyboard on the spotlight. This is by far the cheapest mechanical keyboard you can buy right now, and I got mine from Shopee for 849 pesos. This is my first mechanical keyboard, and I'm really interested with the experience I will get from it. So without much ado, let's get started. This will be a quick unboxing as I do not know how to read Chinese characters. The box design is pretty straightforward. You'll immediately know that this is a 10 keyless keyboard and how the keyboard actually looks like. I bought the white variant but the box shows a black keyboard. Well, uh, they did mark what color is inside though, so that's fine. So we have here the keyboard with its braided USB cable, a detachable palm wrist, a keycap remover, and a manual written in Chinese, which I won't be needing. The keyboard weighs at 650 grams, 723 with the palm rest. It measures at 35.2 centimeters for the length, 13.4 centimeters for the width, and 2.2 centimeters for the height, and approximately 4 centimeters when the flip out stands are raised. Here's a rundown of the keyboard's full technical specifications. The keyboard has a hard plastic build and it's quite heavy. It also does not flex much, which hints that it's durable enough. It has a gaming keyboard logo on top of the arrow keys and an engraved gaming logo on the palm rest. It's redundant, I know. It has a pretty standard minimalistic design and the front plate has a glossy finish, so touching it might leave smudges. The one we have here is white, so it will not be that much noticeable. Personally. I prefer a matte finish, but anyway, the palm rest is matte, so that's good. At the base of the keyboard, we can see the two flip-out stands and two foam pads. It's not anti-slip rubber, so if you'll place this on a smooth table, you might be annoyed with the keyboard slipping. I use an extended mouse pad, so this is not a problem. Inspecting it from this side, we can see the keycaps have a concave shape for better ergonomics. It also has a wooden design here which is a nice touch to the keyboard's overall design. From this angle, we can see the keycaps height are consistent all throughout. Attaching the palm rest is pretty easy. Just snap it in and push it down. Overall, I like how this keyboard was designed, except for one thing. The keycaps have some excess plastic at the bottom. This is normal, but they could have smoothed them out before it hits assembly. As you can see, the letter T and Y on my keyboard are touching each other, and sometimes when I press on the letter T, it takes the letter Y along with it which is quite annoying. This can be remedied by carefully sanding the excess plastic to remove it. Before we go in-depth with the keyboard, let's have some fun and check out the lighting modes. It's not a full RGB keyboard but each key has a LED backlight which gives substantial illumination. The light effects are toggled by pressing the F pen plus SL keys. For your indulgence, here are the 9 lighting effects along with this nice boot up effect.
Now let's talk about the mechanical switches. The advantage a mechanical keyboard offers is that it takes minimal effort and you don't need to fully press down on a key to actuate a keystroke. This greatly improves accuracy and can help reduce stress to the hands. I did some research and found out that this keyboard uses Content Blue Switches, which is a fast-developing Chinese brand founded in 1999. It has identical performance to Atemu Switches. It has a clicky and tactile feel just like any other Blue Switch, and the technical specification says it can last up to 50 million keystrokes. The keycaps are made from double-shot ABS plastic with Cherry MX compatible stems which allows some degree of customization for the keyboard. I've been using this keyboard for over a week now before releasing this review, and I have to say the experience was great. My work requires me to type for long durations, so the included palm rest really helps in reducing stress to my hands. It flexes a bit though, so you'll have to use the flip out stance to take care of it. The mechanical switches helped a lot with typing as I do not need to necessarily press down every single key I type. And for your reference, here's a sound test as I type on the keyboard. As for gaming, well, uh, it performs just the same as my old keyboard. But the clicky and tactile feel I get from a mechanical switch is so much better than what a membrane keyboard has to offer. I don't think I'll ever be going back to a memory keyboard from now on. This keyboard features N-key rollover with anti-ghosting which I think has become a standard for all mechanical keyboards at this time. As you can see, all keys that I press register without conflict. I think I can even put my entire hand on the keyboard and all the keys pressed down will register. Well, it sure did. I've been reading through some forums and Facebook groups about this keyboard and saw mixed feedbacks. A lot claim that this keyboard lasted for more than a year, while some say the switches fail after a few months. Well, it's a cheap mechanical keyboard anyway, so I can't complain much if it fails on me in a few months. What's good with a mechanical keyboard is that you can easily replace a switch if it do fails. I personally have not tried it, and I don't think there are replacement content switches out at least in the Philippine market. But according to this Reddit post, Gotema switches are a compatible replacement for content switches. If anyone here has tried, I would appreciate if you could leave a comment so others would know. Thank you! So there we have it guys. Despite the possible risk I mentioned, I am still recommending the Gigaware K28 to anyone who wants to try out a mechanical keyboard without breaking the bank. It has a very minimalist and ergonomic design, and it also has substantial lighting to help with key illumination. But be warned, the blue switch this keyboard has is extremely loud, so if you don't like loud keyboards, you may just opt for a membrane keyboard like the Raksari, or you can opt for keyboards with red or brown switches, which are known to be quieter. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on that like button. It helps me out a lot. Consider subscribing so you won't miss out on my next uploads. And as always, thanks for watching and see you guys soon.